Hey guys, Comet here. Welcome to another video in my Overly Scienced series. This is episode 2, and in the last episode we picked the map, got some duplicates, and made a little, little starter base here. Now in this episode I want to cover uh, making food, and maybe expanding the base a little bit. So there's this other tool I like to use uh, called Oni Assistant. Again, links will be in the description. You can go through this tab up here to the food calculator and you can select how many duplicates you currently have and then what food source you want to run. And it will tell you how many plants you'll need, how much fertilizer you'll need for those plants, and then how many calories you'll get out of it. So I have three duplicates right now. So it's saying that I would need 15 mealwood plants. But it's usually, this is if the plants are running at full capacity all the time with perfect harvesting. Uh, that's, that's not going to happen. So usually it's better to go a duplicate or two above and then use that many plants. So I would need somewhere between 15 and 20 plants to run three duplicates. But I don't want to just build the farm for that because I'm going to be taking on more duplicates, right? So I'm going to overbuild it up to 18 duplicates and that will become apparent later on. Uh, but for now, we're going to pretend like we have 18 duplicates, so I'm going to need 90 mealwood plants to run all of those duplicates. And this bottomless stomach thing, if you remember from last ep episode when we were picking the duplicates, um, a negative trait that a duplicate can have is bottomless stomach, which means that they need a little bit more food every cycle. So let's say I have 18 duplicates, but two of them have bottomless stomach. I'm going to need a couple more a couple more plants. So that's what that does. And then over here, uh, you can change the hunger difficulty. So these are the settings that you pick at the very, very beginning when you pick the map. Um, I just have it on default. Now, this dupe harvest means that your duplicates will come along and actually uh, harvest the plant if it is unchecked and you have it on uh, no dupe harvest then the plant will sit there idle for a while still consuming fertilizer but eventually the meal lice will fall off of the plant um, that saves duplicate labor but really it requires way too much fertilizer so always use dupe harvest when possible and then wild means that um, the plants are not domesticated. So for example, it would be like this or this where it's spawned in and just sitting on a natural tile. But we're going to be using domesticated plants with dupe harvest and no fertilizer. Fertilizer, uh, I've never really gotten into fertilizer there's a way to uh, up here with improved farming when you skill up your duplicates to have them use a farming station that will allow them to fertilize plants but making fertilizer uh, I've never found it any more beneficial because you could just make your farm bigger and it would give you the same output so we're going to be using 90 mealwood plants, and that will support our three duplicates plentifully for now, but it will allow us to support 18 later. And I don't want to have to change it very soon, so that's why I'm overbuilding it. So the first thing we're going to need are insulated tiles, because it is really cold out. And mealwood, I probably went over this last episode, but mealwood only survives down to 10 degrees Celsius. 
So we can plant them here for now, or here where it's warm. But if we start going out where it's cold, then the plants aren't going to grow. So we're going to need to make an insulated area. And then if it's too cold, warm up that area. And warming up places is easier to do than cooling them off in the early game. And that will become apparent once I unlock a couple more things. So let's dig this out so that we'll have room to put in the farm. I'll jump this ahead to when my duplicates are done digging. Okay, it looks like they're almost done now, so I'm going to put in some food tables over here. I think they're called mess tables. Yeah, mess tables over here. So that they can start eating on tables. That increases their morale. So there's different, uh, if you hit F11, it will bring up room overlays, and your duplicates will get morale bonuses uh, if you build special rooms. So like over here, I have the cots in one room that is smaller than 64 tiles. And this will give them a morale bonus of plus one. Now the mess table, or the, yeah, when you put mess tables in a room like this, it will turn into the mess hall, and that will give a morale of plus three. And morale is used to keep your duplicates from stressing as you increase their skills. So like if I go to hard digging right here, the morale need for this would be one before it starts increasing the duplicate stress levels. And if we look at Lyra, she has three points in morale. So the morale would cover the morale need. And if it's flop so that you have more morale need than you have morale, then your duplicates will start stressing. So if you're having that problem, this is how you fix it. You either de-skill them using the skill scrubber, which we don't have unlocked yet. Oh, I should probably research something. Uh, skill scrubber is unlocked when you get the supercomputer. You use that to de-skill them. If you accidentally put a point somewhere you don't want, and then, uh, so like the more skilled your duplicates become, the more morale you're going to need. So you're going to need different rooms to increase morale. Or you could go to schedule and add in more downtime. But I'm not going to do that yet because first of all, they don't need the extra morale. And second of all, I really need their, them to be working 24-7. So we have a new dupe here. Um, slow learner, that's a no. Bottomless stomach, that's a maybe. Ellie is good at farming. I want either a farmer or a cooker or a chef next. Because I'm going to need to be making food for my duplicates now. So. I think I'm going to go with Ellie for now. And then as you get a new duplicate. Make sure you change their priorities. So Ellie is going to be farming and cooking. And actually, we're going to put cooking above farming. That way they cook the materials first. And she's not doing anything right now because I have to change the schedule. So we're going to put Ellie on her own schedule down here and fill this in with work hours. Ellie. There we go. She should get to work now. Yeah. So this little backpack looking thing, I think it's actually supposed to be a head with a hat on it. But it looks like a backpack from far away. Um, that means your duplicates have skills now. So when duplicates are printed, they automatically come with a skill point. So Ellie, we're going to put that straight into farming. So now she requires one morale because she has learned this skill. But learning this skill also increased her morale by one because it has a little heart, which means she's actually interested in this 
stuff. So if you get duplicates that are interested in the things that you want them to be proficient at, then it saves a little on morale costs. Okay. I will skip this head ahead a little bit further. Uh, I'm gonna dig out some more of this up here. And oh, we have a geyser over here. So there's a trick you can use. Um, oh, no, not that. Uh, if you go to priorities and then the double exclamations and you highlight the geyser, you can just see what it is. So it's a carbon dioxide vent. Um, I don't really like doing that. I kind of want to see it for myself, but you can use that. If you dig in from this side with all geysers, you can see what they are. Actually, no, sorry. It's, it's this side. Yeah, if you dig in from this side, then you can see what it is without having to do that trick. And if you... Geysers take up a 4x4 area, and if you leave out that tile, don't dig it up, but dig up the rest, then it will never erupt. Because this tile is what the geyser checks for overpressurization. So the more you know. Uh, right, like I said, I'm going to skip this ahead, uh, dig out some more of the, the map, and I'll be back. And I just realized that I forgot to give Ellie a bed to sleep on, so this will be her bed now. Otherwise, she's just gonna go sleep on the floor, and we don't want that. Alright, Marie's just finished another research. So after getting the supercomputer, um, I'm gonna go into temperature modulation. This will allow me to build insulated tiles and space heaters, which will allow me to warm up the area that I put the farm in, because it's so cold everywhere. And that's actually going to require the supercomputer. We have the skill scrubber now, but that is going to require the supercomputer, which we can fit here. Like that. And I think I'll put another battery on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, once they finish digging all this out, I'll see you again. Okay, so they're almost done with all the building commands that I had queued up. Now, you see this little hat thing here on the supercomputer? That is because if we go to skills, Marie, our researcher, does not have advanced researching yet. And she's about to level up. And when she does, that's going to be the first thing you want to give your researcher so that they can use the supercomputer and allow you to progress into more complicated researches. Now, since we have this chlorine in here, I want to take advantage of it, because chlorine is a sterile gas, so if you have food just sitting in oxygen or polluted oxygen, I think those are actually the only two, um, it will start to decay. But if you use chlorine or carbon dioxide, those are going to be the easiest ones early game. Uh, you just put your ration box down in here. Actually, I think I'll put it right here so that I can put a ladder coming down right here. And we'll break in right here. This will keep your food from decaying. So this is kind of convenient. We had some chlorine right here. Um, usually you can just dig like a little pit like two tiles deep and put your ration box in there. And then as your duplicates run past, then exhale carbon dioxide, it will find its way down into that pit and keep it sterile. Um, if you don't know about that trick, now you do. So we've got the little backpack symbol here. So that's Marie. I'm going to put her into advanced research. So now the little hat symbol went away from the supercomputer. So she can now start researching temperature modulation. So these blue, this blue bar is the research station, and then the purple bar underneath, that will be the supercomputer. Now, the farm, I don't have much room for it yet, because I can't actually dig through granite. I need my diggers to level up a little bit more, um, if, you're, if you're not sure. So, 
these symbols here, that means I can't dig through the granite yet. Uh, but once I do, you can break out of the starting biome and build wherever you want, pretty much. Uh, you can't dig through Abyssalite yet, either. Once you... No, not that one. This one. You have to get... Uh, I think this one. Yeah, you can dig through Abyssalite if you get super hard digging. Super duper hard digging lets you dig through Diamond and Obsidian. So I need the first digging upgrade, and then I can get through the granite. And I think I'll probably flip, put the farm... I think over here is going to be a good spot. So, like, somewhere in this area. Now, it has to be... Remember... It has to fit 90 plants. So I'm not going to put in those 90 plants yet. I just want to make the outer perimeter of it. And make that big enough to fit the 90 plants. Because if I put in the plants now, I'm going to have to fertilize all 90 of them with dirt. And I don't want to have to be consuming my dirt until I actually need to. So once I increase my duplicate count, then I'll add more plants to the to the area. So this, uh, we're going to copy the settings on this ration box. And we're going to paste them onto these ration boxes over here. And Lyra was almost done with that before she got called to go to sleep. Okay, well, we can copy it from this one. Now we're going to destroy this one, and they should put all of the food from here into here. And we got another skill here. Okay, so now I can upgrade my diggers here. Now they can get through the granite. So I will expand this way. Don't destroy the oxalite here. And we will go out this way right here. Yeah. Okay, I will uh, cut it forward until I have enough room to put in the farm. And then I think I'm approaching the time limit. Yeah, I am getting close to the time, so I want to hurry up and wrap this up so that you don't have to sit through so much boringness. Uh, I'll be back once they have dug out enough space, and then I'll show you how to insulate and how I like to set up my heating mechanism. Oh, something else I just noticed. So this is polluted dirt now. It's output by the outhouse. Uh, when your duplicates come and unclog it, uh, you'll end up with polluted dirt. So you want to build a compost and just stick one over here. And that is found in the research tab up here. Uh, yeah, the very first research I do. That allows you to build a compost. And they'll just take the polluted dirt, put it over here, flip it a couple times, and then you'll get clean dirt back out. Well, normal dirt with germs on it. Um, but when they pick up that dirt, they're going to run across the Wash, basin, wash basins and wash their hands. So I have another research here I can complete. Uh, after that, I like to go into this smart home because that will allow us to make automation wires, which will be used for determining if the, uh, the farm needs to be kept warm or not. So, uh, that was a bad explanation, but space heaters, this is what we're going to use to keep the farm warm. They take an automation signal in, and you can turn them on and off. So, I put a little thermo sensor next to it, and when it's too cold, then it will turn on. So, that, that's just how that works. That's why you need the automation wire. So, we have another duplicate. Uh, let's see. I really want a chef. I don't think we need another digger yet. This one, Mima has decorating, which will come in handy in the future, but we don't really need that yet. Uh, we're not running low on food, so I don't need the muck fruit. I think I will take Mima. Yeah. And since she's coming from the printing pod, she automatically gets a skill point. So we can immediately allow her to dig harder material. And I have to change her priorities to digging and building. And then, let's see, 
decorating. We'll put that up as well, because later on I'll have her be my decorator. Copy that, paste that there so that has the same settings. And then I have to change her schedule now. Bath time, downtime, and work. I'm gonna move Meemaw there. Uh, she has this little early bird thing, so we don't want, we want to take full advantage of that, so by leaving a downtime slot here, she won't get that last uh, early bird bonus, so I think we'll put her, we'll add a new schedule here, and we'll put her on this one. And then the next duplicate I get, I will put on the one Mima is on right now. That way we take full advantage of the bonus. And we'll do that. And now she's going to need a bed as well. I can't dig that way, so I think I'll actually move the bedrooms over to here. So we have one, two, three, four, five duplicates for now. Um, six, seven, eight is usually how big I built the bedroom. For uh, a four tile high bedroom room, bed, yeah, bedroom, you can only make uh, eight beds. Because if you do the math, right, the largest size a bedroom could be, there are barracks, sorry, is 64 tiles. So if you take 64 divided by four, that tells you how wide it can be. And the beds are two tiles wide. So, divided by two, that gives you eight beds. Eight beds per barracks. And then uh, I'll just do the same door trick here. And when I get more duplicates, then I can just add more cots out this way. Uh, well, no, this one is open, and this one is no permissions. Okay. And they still haven't dug out this yet because I haven't queued it up. Uh, more research. <laughs> There's a bunch of little things happening. So we can't actually make automation wire yet. So why are we upgrading it, you should ask. Well, because once we build a uh, rock crusher from the brute force refinement section, we can make refined metals. So now I will go ahead and queue up some space over here for them to dig out, and we can put the farm in over here. And I will come back once that is done. When you are uh, doing stuff like this, you need to be very careful not to allow your duplicates to get trapped like this, otherwise they will die. Uh, I don't know how this happened, but Mima and Lyra have somehow got themselves stuck in this pit of carbon dioxide, and to get them out, what I'm going to do is just build a staircase up this way. Uh, so, just a warning, your duplicates do have a tendency to kill themselves. Uh, they just like being dead, I guess. So, I'm just gonna dig out like this, and that should break them free. So, the printing pod went off, and... We have Ren here, who is good at cooking, so I'm going to take I'm going to take Ren. That way we have someone to cook all of the mealwood into pickled meal once we get the crops going. Okay, so we have another duplicate that likes killing himself. This is Nicola now. I have no idea how he got stuck down here, but he's probably going to die. Um... He might be able to tunnel over here to the oxygen. I doubt it. We'll see. We can try. I don't know. Maybe the polluted water will give off some polluted oxygen. He can run up. Yeah, okay. this. Okay, well, <laughs> he might be able to live. 
the polluted water is off-gassing polluted oxygen, and dupes can breathe polluted oxygen. Uh, they don't like it, it stresses them out, but if it's between getting stressed and dying, I will take getting stressed. So, Nicola here is really lucky. He won't die today. Now, getting him out of this pit, I'll probably just put a ladder right here. Oh, come on, keep going. Up and over. Get to the oxygen. Okay. So he's okay for now. Let me put in a ladder. Deconstruct that so we can get back out. You gotta watch them. Otherwise they will kill themselves. Alright, he's free now. So we're gonna block this back up. And then hopefully no one ever goes back down here. For now. So this, this is bad. Don't let them do this. If once he finishes that, he's going to block himself down in here. So you have to move them up on top and then they'll do it. I don't know why, but they just love getting themselves stuck. Okay, so the farm is pretty much done now. Uh, just in time because we have a food sh shortage. This space heater will be heating up this area. Um, this space heater isn't connected yet. Uh, there's a bunch of polluted oxygen in here, but as my dupes move in and out, they will breathe in the polluted oxygen and turn it into carbon dioxide for me. And I want carbon dioxide in here because when... Oh my god, I don't dupes. When the mealwood uh, is harvested, the meal lice will fall onto the ground and will immediately start decaying if it is in polluted oxygen or oxygen, but not if it's in carbon dioxide. So I have this all walled up right here, and the door is up on the top. That way, the carbon dioxide, since it's heavier than oxygen, should pool up to this point right here, which should uh, submerge the meal ice in carbon dioxide, preventing any decay. And then um, I'm going to put in the grill down here because it gives off heat 4.5 kilodTUs per second which I'll just use to warm up this area kind of passively that way I don't have to run all of these space heaters now I'm going to need way more plants than this right now uh, so I have six dupes let me pull this back up move this back down to six so we're gonna need 30 mealwood okay so this is seven right here, this is eight, so we'll put, so that's seven plus eight plus two, uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and we want to overbuild it slightly. So we're going to need to connect all of this up. Uh, and it will overload the wire. So what we're gonna do is put in some manual generators and some batteries. Uh, once we get a proper power plant, we can stop using this cheap wire. Now there is an exploitative way to run your entire base off of cheap wire. Uh, I'll link a video or something to that in a card if you want to do that. I don't like doing it. I think it's too exploitative. Uh, we'll let them build this and then I really do... I'm running short on time. I know I've been cutting back in a lot. Uh, and oh, The other thing I wanted to go over was consumables. So you want to disable your dupes from being able to eat meal lice. You want to force them to eat the pickled meal and stuff. Because pickled meal... Let's see. So meal lice has... Oh, how do I find this? Meal, meal lice has a 600 kilocalorie value. If you look at pickled meal, it has 1800 kilocalories. I think it's that might be because it takes three... Yeah, it takes... Th so you don't get any uh, calorie bonus. It's just that... 
it's easier to store a bunch of pickled meal over here than it is to store meal lice and then have them run the meal lice back. So by turning off the meal lice for them to eat, they cook it first, and then any excess pickled meal they'll put over here, which they can then go grab and eat. Um, that's the way I like to do it. I actually don't think it will actually change anything. Um, but for... Hang on. We might actually need this, because my dupes are starving. Almost. Food shortage. In the microbe musher, there is a way to turn meal lice into more calories by using water. And I need them to hurry up and finish this so that I can show you. So if you're running like super low on food like I am right now, <laughs> you're going to need a microbe musher. You can turn dirt and water into uh, paints mush bars, yeah, and that's like the lowest quality food. Let me just go point. Uh, okay, so Nicola, super hard. Lyra, super hard. Hard, hard digging, that is. Okay, so the mush bar, yeah, it turns dirt and water into calories. Now, lice loaf, it turns... 1,200 kilocalories of meal lice into 1,700 kilocalories. So, by adding meal lice to water, you end up generating calories. Just a little tip on that. But if you're doing that, then you have to make sure that your water source doesn't have any germs in it. So if you're doing, like, a... Uh, uh, I don't have them yet, but if you have plumbed bathrooms and you're sieving that polluted water into clean water, you have to put it in a separate tank as your lice loaf water tank. Otherwise, you'll end up poisoning all of your duplicates with food poisoning, which isn't really that big of a deal. Your dupes can't die from getting sick. Uh, slime lung doesn't really hurt them. It just slows them down. Uh, the big one, though, is down in the magma biome. There's things called spore childs, and they will give off zombie spores, and those really affect your duplicates in a negative way. So let's try and keep the colony from dying here. It's a major food shortage. I think we'll be fine. That'd be embarrassing if I... I was planning on going to cycle 2000, I barely make it to 15. Okay, so these are drawing too much power, so what I'm gonna do is... Not that. I'm going to cut these from being able to draw power. That way it all goes into the micro musher and grill. Okay, so these down here... Turn off as well. So this draws 240, this draws 60. We're producing 800, so that's consuming 300, so... Uh, plus the 120 here, that'd be 420, nice. Plus another 120, no, that should be able to power all this. Consumables. Okay, so here's the mush bar. Actually, we're going to disable them from being able to eat the mush bar. And we're going to fry up the mush bar. So this is another way of generating calories for free. When you're limited on your input resources. So they'll, they'll drop off the mush bar here. And then, who is my cook again? Oh. Mima can... Eh, well... Put her on super hard digging. I think it's Ren, yeah. Ren's my chef here. So, priorities. Ren. Oh, uh, I think I might have gotten Ren while I was speeding things up. So Ren's gonna be my chef, not uh, who I said was gonna be before. Unreachable food. Who cannot reach food? This is bad. We'll increase that priority slightly. Um, 
let's see, if you find like little things like this, buried objects, sometimes there's a muckroot or something there, so I'll go ahead and dig these up in case there's any food. Because I need that food right now. It'll either be a hatch or food, so that one was a hatch. That one was food, okay. Lock these back up so they have somewhere to sleep. And it looks like we have some ice melting in here. This is sloppy. Uh, it'll start getting a little bit cleaner as time progresses. I just needed something working now. And I don't have any research going. Let me get some research going, so... The last thing I did was this. Next thing I want to do is sound amplifiers. I don't know why smart batteries are in that section. I think they should be up here with advanced power regulation. But anyway, this will allow us to automate coal generators. The smart battery, coal generator, and automation wire. You can use all three to completely automate your power. And the other thing I need to put in... Refinement. Rock Crusher. Uh, we'll put here. Down here. I'll put it here. And I'll put in some more of these. And then I can connect all of this up. Once this place gets hot enough, I'll move all of this machinery up to here. Um, I just have them down here, again, for the passive heating. So we're going to use the rock crusher to make some refined metals, which will allow us to make automation wire. Right, we're missing refined resources. And alongside that, it will allow us to make the better wires so that we can run more things off of one wire. This, okay, it's too hot over here, so what I'm gonna do for now is snip that using the pliers mod. Um, I'll leave a link, or not a link, but a list of all the mods that I use down in the description. Most of them are just quality of life or aesthetic stuff. More starvation, okay. Uh, we're getting there. Oh, I need to change this so that it will allow... Oh, it's allowing everything. Okay, so we don't want to put in meal lice. We don't want to put in mush bars. Uh, we don't want any pack of fillets. Is cooked fish here? Cooked fish should be there. We haven't made any cooked fish. Okay, that's why it's not available. And then we'll just copy this over here. So we don't want to be storing any meal lice over here, right? We want it to stay all over here so that it's a quick trip to the grill. We need to mop up all this stuff so it stops off-gassing into polluted oxygen. This is probably going to be a longer episode than I was expecting. But I really wanted to get the farm up and running. And this... You know, I'm going to... Uh, I don't have any refined metal yet. Okay, so... Copper and iron. Let's get that going. I don't have coal generators yet. I really need coal generators. Ooh, another uh, I guess we can take another farmer... But taking on more dupes when I have no food might be a problem. Oh well. We'll take May. And let me set the priorities on May. You will be a farmer. Schedule. Let's get you on your own schedule. Downtime and work time. Okay. And we'll move you. Research just completed. I don't have... Okay, I have jumbo, jumbo, blah, jumbo batteries now. But that's not what I need. I need coal generators so that I can produce carbon dioxide. 
for this area and not require duplicates for power generation. That just allows me to do other things while I'm generating power. Because right now my power is limited by my number of dupes, which need to be making food for the rest of the colony so that we don't all die. Insufficient oxygen generation. I was kind of neglecting that too. Okay. Um, I guess I can put in... Well, it looks like they're okay. For now. Once this area over here starts getting too depressurized, I'll put in another diffuser. What is drawing all that power? Just the diffuser, really? Okay, um... I will jump this ahead till I get to coal generators. That way, uh, I can finalize this, and then, then I'll probably end it there. Uh, another thing I want to point out is that if I put a light up here, then it will allow my chef to cook a little bit faster, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And someone has just made a mess, and my outhouses are full. Okay, uh, problems. I'm having problems. I'm making messes all over the place now. Great. These... Okay, I need to put someone on bathroom duty. So, let's see. Let's put Mima on bathroom duty for now. So that would be under life support? No, just kidding. Tidying, okay. So Mima will be tidying. And we will increase this priority to six. That way this will be done before other tidy orders. Let's make sure she goes over and does that, okay. Good. So it looks like uh, we're stabilizing now. We have more food. Uh, this seems to be working properly. Once I get more plants up, uh, I'll probably turn off the micro mushroom because life loaf doesn't uh, store very well. The only reason you would turn meal lice into pickled meal is because of its decay rate. And, well, I guess it doesn't really matter since I'm storing everything in a sterile atmosphere. So, over here, like, it says unrefrigerated, but it's in a sterile atmosphere. That means that the decay rate uh, is pretty much zero. So you could use any atmosphere but hydrogen and polluted oxygen, and it will keep your food sterile. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's refrigerated or not. So you could keep it in oxygen if you refrigerate it, or you could just keep it in a sterile atmosphere at any temperature, or even a vacuum will work to keep it sterile. That's what I will eventually be using once we get into the late game. I use a little visco gel trick. So I think this will be the end of this set. Another dupe. Uh, I don't think we want another dupe yet. We're pretty stable right now. Okay. So I think that will be the end of this episode. Uh, next episode I want to go over how to start transitioning into later stages of the game. And that will focus on refining different metals using a... I don't have it yet. Using a... Metal refinery right here. So I will get that queued up. And then in the next episode, uh, I'll go over how to set one of those up and why they're so important. So thanks for watching. I uh, hope you learned something. And I'll see you in the next episode.